you guys getting ready to take you guys out blue crab crabbing with crab pots right here in Beaufort South Carolina we've been doing some offshore fishing and we have baked fish carcasses that we're going to be using for bait you can see some of the fish that we've been catching look here big cobia head now this big guy right here he's not going to fit right in our live well uh, bait compartment so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna shove him his head right through one of the entrances of our crab trap is it this is one of the four cubic foot crab traps here and i tried to get him down in that bottom part so that when he's in there or the head's in there the crabs still have to go through the entrances to get to him that's the reason those uh, crab traps are designed with the crab bait compartments in the center of the traps. That way when they're positioned, the crabs can't get to the bait. The only thing that is exposed is what is on the bottom. So we're going to get them baited up. All different types of fillets. One of the Spanish mackerel. We didn't leave them too much meat. Another piece of the big cobia fillets or pieces. Some of the other fish that we're catching offshore right now. So when we're catching fish, you know, even the ones that we don't like to eat, we still, you know, have a purpose for them. Is to bring them home, bait our traps with them, repurpose them as crab bait we're gonna set these guys out in this beautiful area of marsh rivers that you see behind us take you guys along as we set them out show you the positions and probably let them soak for about 24 hours at least till tomorrow sometime before we'll go back and check them I'm hearing that the blue crab are doing pretty good in our area now. And it's time to get out and take you guys back crabbing. We're baited up. Get them on this front of this little skiff that we're gonna be taking you guys along on. And we're using four traps. Because here in South Carolina, this is my wife. Stephanie and myself and with a recreational fishing license here in South Carolina we can actually bait and set out two pots. You need to have yellow crab pot buoys on your traps and you need your name and address on those buoys. temperatures like up north right now here in South Carolina today we're in the low 90s steps already getting those pots ready beautiful out here today mostly blue skies but it is hot 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 right so yes it is hot so you can see i've got some fishing reels in the boat and after we get these pots set up 
we're going to head out to one of the local sandbars in our area. Maybe to cool off in the water a little bit and do a little bit of fishing. Right here in Beaufort, South Carolina right now, if you're looking to come down here and do some fishing, the sharks are everywhere. It doesn't matter what you're using to bait for fish. You should definitely be able to catch a shark right now. These creeks that we're riding in right now, these are tidal creeks. And we're trying to get out far enough that when the tide goes out, that the pots are not exposed out of the water. This area that you're seeing will be exposed it will be back down to mud we have six to nine foot tidal uh, surges up and down in this area one of our favorite little spots right here we got to try one here let's that top right one will be fine we'll move on up just a little bit more you can just throw it anytime you get ready stuff making sure we didn't splash you guys for some reason I did really really good over the years in that little curve right there and I think what it is is that whole area back in there when the crabs are coming back out of the marsh, they kind of, you know, move with the tide. So when they're coming back out, that's the first baited crab pot that they'll come to. I've always liked this spot right here also because there's a lot of little creeks and entrances to come together. We got one here, one there, the one we're coming out of, and this one here. To the left right there, be fine, Steph. That's the one with the big cobia head in it guys i'm curious to see how that's going to work with the cobia head not being inside of the bait compartment let's throw this one here right there to the left here Steph. wait okay guys i hate to do this but we're going to have to swap that pot out because I feel like that rope on that one's too short. Like I was saying, I really hated to do that. I hate to move this pot after she done threw it out, but with our tides, the tide is already going out. But when the tide comes back in the next high tide cycle, these pots can be drug around by the current. So I'm going to carry this one back to a little shallower area. set and we're fixing to pull them and we're going to start with that last pot that we placed first and the first pot last a few things that we brought aboard with us today a pair of tongs and our trusty gauge because here in south carolina we need to catch blue crabs that are five inches point to point we've also brought a basket to dump our crabs in and then when we sort them we're going to put them on ice in our little cooler 
so that you know it starts to sedate them put them in that state of comatosis the tide is coming in and it's been about 21 22 hours since we set the pots out with you guys i was about to turn and go the wrong way i know these little creeks about like the back of my hand guys or the palm of his hand <laughs> that's right i hope we're loaded down with crabs today i hope so Got a bite, got a bite, got a bite. Oh man, can't believe this. Only two crabs in this pot. So not looking good. There's still plenty of bait in the pot. So what I'm gonna do is just dump these crabs out of this pot and throw it back in. A lot of times, believe it or not guys, the second day is better for crabbing with the bait. I don't know why. Maybe it gets stinky and that's my that might be what they like the most. It is stinky already, so by the second day it should be real stinky. I don't think those guys right there are gonna make it. Nope, that one's not. That one's not. And I what I'm measuring is from this little point to this little point. And this little guy, his points are really, really short. This one, his points are kind of average size, but neither of them are keepers. So the next pot that we're going to be checking with you guys is in that little bit deeper area yesterday where we had to switch up the crab traps and put the crab trap with the longer rope on it. Man, trap don't feel too heavy. Look at the fish running across the top of the water, guys. After some shrimp, I seen some shrimp jumping. A little bit better pot. Yeah. A little better. A little better. We may have a keeper or two in here. And like I was telling you guys, these pots have been set out about 21, 22 hours, and that is perfectly legal in our area. Crab pots can actually be set out for up to like four days. But as a reminder, don't ever use the information that we give to you in our videos. Always check the rules and regulations for yourself. We cannot be held responsible for your actions. Still got plenty of bait. Look at that. It smells too. Too bad this isn't smell a vision. You can see why those crabs would be after it. Go ahead and go through these real quick. Get them on ice, the ones that's going to make it. Definitely this guy here is too small. Yeah, definitely Look at a baby guy. crab. I know that right there is looking like a keeper. Oh, a big one. See where I'm putting the gauge, guys? That's about a five and a quarter inch crab. The inside diameter of this gauge right here is what is five inches. this is a homemade gauge i do not know where you guys could get a gauge like this unless you got a good buddy like i do that'll make you one some of you guys have asked me about the gauge and that's a keeper he's Barely. making it. this one is not so there's two There's three. That guy right there, he's not going to make it. Three. You guys like handling the crabs barehanded? 
If you know where to grab them, it's not bad. See, I'm grabbing him right there at the base of that flipper fin. The flipper fin is the one right here on the back, guys. Grab it at the base, and they shouldn't be able to grab you. But just like I said, don't ever trust what I'm telling you. You got to check this stuff for yourself. You got to grab them for yourself. All these look too small. That one might That's be a keeper. That's a keeper there. That one down in the bottom. He's a nice one. And he's got that one claw, so I can grab him by his claw. He, no way he can grab me. Nice big crab. That's about a six incher, guys. So there was four keepers in that pot right there. This is a small yeah. crab. And it ain't going to let go. You can see too, too small. small. One, two, three, four. here is set right where these creeks are coming out and this is also the pot that had the big cobia head in it this pot is heavy is that just the weight of it see it's mudded down wow. that cobia head is heavy in it what makes this pot so heavy look at this rebar that's on the bottom of this thing what is that, one inch rebar? It's thick, I know Jeez that. Jesus. And that cobia head is still in good condition. We're still not seeing a lot of crabs, guys. Maybe the crabs are out in the bigger water right now. Or we may have to see if that second day on the crab bait with you guys is gonna do any better. If you guys want us to bring you along on the second day, of pulling these traps with that old bait let me know please we're working for you guys to bring you guys videos you've hit the subscribe button you keep coming along with us and it's free it's totally free for you guys we're put us to work we're ready for I was thinking from that little red claw that this is gonna be a little female, but it's a little male. You can see that Washington Monument on his back or his belly. So we're up to those four keepers, and I'm seeing that right this there is a definitely keeper. a keeper. That's five, and that one right there is gonna be close. Let's check him out. He's got the gaze. Man. He's a keeper. Right, these other two are too small. Both of them are too small. Let go, fella. Keep going. Damn. Oh, Steph, let me grab it. Check this out for you that don't know. See that pointed long apron right there? That is the male blue crab, long pointed. The females will be triangular shaped on the bottom. No female so far back in here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Try to catch them coming in and out of this area. How many are we gonna get out of here? So all together there's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13 crabs right here. Is that what you're coming up with, Steph? Yep. 13 right there in that pot, guys. Check him, Steph. Too short. What? Too short. Oh, well, no, no barely. You trying to? Yeah, he's barely a keeper. I know what you was trying to do. You were trying to make it where you could have more crabs to eat tonight than me. I'm not gonna let you do that. You got to check these things closely for me, Steph. That's a keeper. We'll check that one there while I got it up. That one is too short. That Let was, me check it again. Oh man, it's kind of hard with my left hand. I can't keep it steady. Can't, it's uh -oh, hard for me to keep it steady with my cross. left hand. Don't you get my cross? Oh, I think his point just broke because it, oh, <laughs> it, it was touching. It was touching a little if bit. If I took you home with your point being broke, I'd get checked by DNR, and we ain't put a quarter of a mile back into Marsh Creek, and you ain't worth me getting a ticket, buddy. 
I'm gonna let you go. Look at here. Watch this here. He's gone. Oh, this is a big guy down in here. Oh yeah. Real nice one. I bet that's a meaty crab. He's heavy too. And when I say heavy guys, the ones that crab a lot, time as you pick a crab up, you can tell if it's full of meat because he'll just be heavy. And another thing that you can do is take those crabs and just kind of feel around on their shell, mash on it. If that crab shell is not like given where you can mash it in and stuff, that's a hard bodied shell crab. He hadn't molded in a while and it's filled out with meat. This one looks like a we keeper got a, here. We got an extra claw. This is a keeper. Yeah. That, that's probably the crab that that claw come off of right there. Yep. Big guy. He's got real big long points as you can see. This one's a keeper. This one's a keeper. Beauty. Too short. Oh, too man. short. Too short. Too short. Too short. All those are too short. All so. of them. How about this one here? Did I you check him. it good? Yep. He's got little claws on him anyhow. Yep. But he is too short, all of them. So what's you guys' favorite part of the crab when you're eating this? Mine is the claws. Steph's is the... The swimmer fin. I love that big lump swimmer fin meat. Yes, yeah, the lump meat right in the body where the swimmer fin is. You know that big wild, round chunk of white meat like that right there? Stephanie loves those. So two, four, six, seven right here we're going to dump back to repopulate. We're right by the pot, so they might end up right back in the pot if you dump them right here. And guys, just like I said earlier, not the first little female out of all these crabs today. Go out there and find some females and make some babies. How many we end up with, guys? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Not bad. I'm still pretty clean. We definitely got enough to eat. Yeah. And guys, if we choose not to eat these crabs the same day, I still like to go home, clean my crabs, and I like to boil them and put them in the freezer uh, or steam them. Just go ahead and cook them. They last a lot longer and you barely can't tell that, you know, they're not fresh. We got it. Ooh, this water will be hot coming out of this hose to start with. So guys, look here. I'm about to clean these crabs with you real quick. I'll show you how we do it. Process of cleaning one of these crabs real quick. They've been sitting on ice a little while. And the first thing I like to do is just get them positioned down. Once you get him positioned down, he can't reach over the top of him and grab your hand anyhow. And just hold that crab down. Reach, go with your thumb on top of that uh, claw right up next to the base or right back here by the legs. And just grab that point and push up on it, get it opened up. Once I do that, I remove his facial features 
and these little guys right here which are what people call the dead man's fingers the lungs of the crab i've always heard that if you eat those they will make you sick so don't try it i go ahead and stick my finger right here at the base which is his apron some guys come in from this way and they have to use something to prick it up like this to do it remove it but i just as i got it over just grab it right there and push down once i do that we keep a high pressure hose that i showed in our other videos to remove all the inside parts which some people call the mustard i do not like the mustard steph does not like the mustard i know some of you guys are saying all oh, the mustard is the best part well you guys can have it you want if you want me to i could probably bag that up in a little <laughs> bag for you guys and send it to you because this old boy right here ain't gonna eat it i've tried it so look once we do that right there guys just take a look here Look how beautiful white pretty meat that's in the blue crabs. And the blue crabs have such a sweet meat. Nice crab. Yeah, buddy. So we got our crabs clean and we come up with a total of 11, just like Stephanie had mentioned. Now, Another thing before we go, if you do decide to go crabbing and you put your crabs on ice, understand that they can only stay on ice a certain amount of time. After a certain amount of time, it will kill those crabs. And we never eat crabs that had died before we clean them. Um, I have heard that, you know, if they die and you eat them in the first hour or so, that they are still okay, but not to me. I'd rather throw that crab away than for Steph and I to end up being sick. Those are some beauties. They are. They're going to be yummy. So our plan is not to eat these crabs today. We're just going to cook them, guys. And we got one of the red copper pots that we've showed in the video in the past that we like to use for steaming our crabs and one of the reasons why we love using that red copper pot is it, be, it come with a rack that fits right down in the bottom that lifts it up right off of the water above the water level we'll need about inch inch and a half of water to steam them That should be plenty because I plan on boiling these crabs or steaming them only about 10 minutes. And the reason why I'm only going to do that for 10 minutes is because when we take them back out the freezer, we're going to reheat them. We'll put them back in the steamer just a little while. So 10 minutes and then a few more minutes after we pull them back out. Um, typically, if I'm going to go ahead and eat the crabs, 15 minutes is the limit on the uh what we do how we long we steam ours and when i've i've kind of timed it before i did like 20 minutes 25 minutes i've tried different things and that 15 minutes that meat releases out of those crabs almost perfectly wouldn't you say so stuff yeah yeah they do good that way people have lots of different things they do salts vinegars all that kind of stuff we just steam them and that time frame to us, they come out kind of easily. Let's see if we can get all 11 of these guys into that pot. Yeah, I think they're all fit. We'll have to pack them in there. We have the eye set on high for now until it gets to boiling or steaming. Put our lid on there. 
so that that heat can start to build up. Once we um, see that the pot is steaming, um, it's got a little vent hole right here in the top. You start seeing that steam coming out of the top of it. That's when you want to set your timer. 10 minutes. We're going to place them in Ziploc bags, no water, not covered in water or anything. And we're also not going to season our crabs because we don't waste the seasoning on putting it on the outside of the shells of the crabs. The way we do it is once we get ready to eat our crabs, we'll take a glass dish, something like that. We'll melt some butter in it in the microwave is a good way to do it. Sometimes we have the little metal type ramekins right here. Ramekins right here. And as we're boiling them, we'll sit it right on the edge or steaming them right on the edge by the burner and let that butter melt down. And the only thing we do after that is add the trusty, my favorite seasoning of all, Old Bay. This is what our crabs look like after the 10 minute. Hope you have enjoyed this video. We did put in some time and effort to carry you guys along and ask you to please hit the subscribe button. Give us a like.